What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make this awesome American chestnut box with a glass lid. Let's go ahead and get started with the project. The first step in this build is to mill down the material. So I'm making my box out of American chestnut and that's a pretty rare wood so I'm going to try and maximize what I can out of this wood. The wood was an inch thick so I milled it down to a half an inch thick on my bandsaw. Then I could head over to the planer and flatten all of the pieces. I got this nifty little blade angle gauge for my birthday. You put it on the table of the machine, zero it out, and then you can place it on the blade of your machine and it'll tell you exactly what angle the blade is at relative to the table. I was going for 45 degrees, so I just beveled my blade until I got a perfect 45. Once I knew my blade was at a perfect 45 degrees, I went ahead and cut a 45 degree angle on the ends of all of our chestnut pieces. One little trick I like to use is to use a large magnet as a stop block, but unfortunately in this case the magnet will hit my miter gauge so we can't do that here. Next, I have to cut a small rabbit in the bottom of all of our chestnut pieces, and this will accept the bottom of the box. Now, you may have seen this trick before, but if you're building a mitered box, a super clever way of attaching it all together is to lay all of your pieces in a line, use some masking tape or blue painter's tape to attach them all together. Just make sure they're all in a nice straight line before you go ahead and put the tape down. It's very important that these are all nice and straight and that the joints line up. Once you've taped up all your seams, you can very carefully flip the whole thing over. And now you can see all of your miters are exposed. And you can go ahead and apply some wood glue into all the miters. Once you have glue in all of your miters, you can very carefully roll the whole box up and it won't fall apart because you taped the seams. This is what's so nice about doing those seams like we did with the tape. It just rolls up very nicely and it keeps everything nice and square. I like to keep two pieces of tape on standby to tape that final seam together. So while it's drying, let's go ahead and glue up the bottom of our box. So I ripped down a little bit more chestnut on a table saw and I just jointed all the edges. So now we can glue it up into a panel. And by now I am almost out of wood glue. So I was using just a little bit, which is really all you need. Now we need to make the frame that's gonna hold our glass. This is gonna sit on top of the box and act as the lid. So for that, I ripped down a couple narrow strips of chestnut on the table saw out of some leftover material. I used my mutter gauge on my table saw to cut a 45 degree angle on the end of each one of those strips. This is gonna to go together the same way that the box did with the tape. Once all the miters are done, you can really start to see how it's going to come together. This little lid is going to look really good with the glass, and I really like the style of this box. Next, we need to set up our table saw to cut a small slot in all of those pieces to accept the glass. So I'm going to be cutting about halfway through, and uh, that's going to vary depending on how big your box is. This is a very sketchy cut, so if you don't feel comfortable doing it, definitely don't do this.
By now, the bottom of the box was dry, so I could run that through the planer a couple times and get it all nice and flat. From there, I headed right back over to the table saw to cut it down to size. My homemade miter sled was definitely a must in this project and it made everything super easy to cut. And then I went ahead and glued the bottom into the box. So I got this frame put together. I just used wood glue in the corners. Once it was dry, I used some blue painter's tape and I covered a lot of the glass near the edge because I am going to be working on these edges, sanding them, planing them off, and just cleaning everything up. And I really don't want to scratch that glass. So I used some blue painter's tape and that's just going to help protect it. I'm going to use my block plane and add a nice little chamfer on these corners. I'm also going to do the same thing to the top edge of the box. At this point, it was time to sand, so to keep my chamfers nice and crisp on the edges, I wrapped a piece of sandpaper around a block of wood and I hand sanded around the entire outside of the box. For the bottom of my box, I used the random orbit sander and that just helped keep it nice and flat. Before we install all of the hardware on this box, I wanted to go ahead and finish it. So for this project, I'm using General Finishes Armor Seal, and I already have an entire video talking about how I finish my project. So I'll link that up in the cards up above, or I'll leave a link down in the description box below. The basic concept I use is to apply a thick coat of finish, let it sit for about 10 seconds, then come back with a dry paper towel and wipe it all off but I go into a lot more detail in the other video, so I would definitely encourage you to check that out. Wormy American Chestnut is such a cool wood when you put finish on it. Finish really highlights all of those wormholes, all the colors that you find in chestnut, and it just looks amazing. It's really too bad that all the chestnut trees died off and we can't get any more chestnut lumber. For those of you wondering, the chestnut seeds that I planted last summer did not end up sprouting. I'm not really sure why, but I followed all the directions and for some reason they just didn't grow. So now I'm looking at getting a sapling and planting it right in the ground. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I had a blast making this American chestnut box. I always like working with chestnut because it's not a common wood anymore, especially since all the trees died out and it finishes really nice, it works really nice, and it really smells good. If you are not already subscribed to the channel, I would encourage you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also be sure to hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever I post a new video. 
Also be sure to check out my website. The link is in the description box down below, sethscustomcreations.com. I've got products on there, more information about me, some other stuff you might like. So I would definitely encourage you to check out the website. Also be sure to check out my Instagram account. I've got a lot of behind the scenes stuff that doesn't get put up on my YouTube channel over on my Instagram. So I'll stick the name up on the screen there for you. Seth's Custom Creations over on Instagram. Definitely be sure to check it out. I'll see you guys next week.